Hello friends, good morning. The new academic year has begun. This is our first session on English literature and language. Today we have a talk on an introduction to English literature and literary studies. Today we have in our studio two very eminent professors and authors. One is Dr. Deepta Acher. She is an associate professor with the Department of English MS University, Baroda. She is an experienced teacher, has taught to several classes and has earned a noun as a, and fame as a very uh, talented teacher. She has authored several books. She is in charge of the UGC Departmental Research Scheme of the Department of English MS University, Baroda. We have another eminent fellow with us, Dr. Sachin Kathkar. He is also an associate professor in the Department of English, MS University, Baroda. He is himself a practicing poet. It is indeed a very great pleasure for all of us to have him with us. He writes poetry. He is a good translator and a practicing critic also. His latest collection of poetry is called Jara Sandacha blog varche kahi ansh he writes in marathi and in english he has been teaching english literature to students for many years this is a special initiative of the government of gujarat higher education in which teachers from all over gujarat eminent teachers are invited to give talks on various topics this is the beginning of this year's bisect session on english literature and now I invite both the eminent scholars to give their very scholarly views about what is literature, why do we study literature, what are the things that a student while studying literature should keep in mind. So now I hand over the session to my friends, Dr. Kethkar and Dr. Acher. Thank you. Yeah. Hello friends, so uh, we will have a very informal kind of talk uh, regarding very basic aspects of literature, regarding the thoughts that uh, usually occur to students when they enter the first year. What is literature? Why do we study it? What do we mean by literary studies? And uh, things like what is literary criticism? So what I will do with Dipta here, that we'll have a conversation about the uh, very basic elements of literary studies and uh, so we will start with uh, the very definition of the term literature and I will ask Deepta here to respond to uh, what is in her view meant by literature. So let's begin by looking at the slides and then followed up by discussion on the basic aspects of literary studies. So. The first thing that comes to our mind is what is literature and then we can think of why we study it in the first place. So if you can look at the ca cartoon you can see that literature is a, just a long text message. So today when we think of literature we are really thinking of a text, a text which is written down and which has a particular shape, a form belonging to a particular genre. Can That's very interesting. Uh, let us think about how we use the term literature in our day-to-day -day life. And when we use the word literature, we basically use it in two ways. First, we use it with a definite article. and. Uh, other way of using the word literature is without the use of definite article. Does it make so much of a difference? It, it does. It definitely does. At least for the students who, are, who want to find out what do we mean when we study literature. What is it that they are studying? If somebody asks them, what, is, what are you studying? Then they have to answer. I think uh, so uh, should they use uh, literature with definite article or should they use it without definite article? Let's look at the next slide. Okay. 
when we use uh, word literature with the definite article as I want to read all the literature on malaria it means I want to read everything printed available to me on the subject of malaria and when I want to use word literature with without the definite article what do we mean when we use it without the definite article as in I have selected literature as one of my subjects in college. It implies texts which have significant artistic value in a particular culture. Now do you think the text that you find in your mobile has significant artistic value, Deepta? Well, the day we have mobile novels, then it might have significant literary value. But as of now, we just use it to pass on common information and sometimes jokes and other uh, common things. So as of now, I would not say that literature without a definite article is found in mobiles. Right. But the distinction between literature with definite article and without definite article is a very important distinction for a student who just starts to study literature in college. The question then arises if well, literature without the use of article is what we are going to study, then why do we study it in the first place? Yeah, actually this is a question that has been answered in different ways all across time. When we first look at the study of literature, it was basically uh, done outside college. But when the study of literature entered colleges, then there were different reasons. One of the important reasons was to uh, expand education to groups of people who had not acquired knowledge. The second reason was to give information about a nation and a nation's culture. And later on, some people believed that we study literature in order to understand life, life itself. But today, I think there is a general consensus that we have a specific uh, uh, reason to study literature. And that is, if you look at the slide, because it is an extremely important part of our culture and society. It helps us to understand human beings, the society and arts in a better way. So basically to study literature is to study ourselves and our own culture. Uh, very often I have found Deepta that when students are asked what are you studying? or why are you studying the things that you are studying then they are at loss of words they don't know what to reply so I think now it should be clear that we study literature because it's such an important part of our culture and society and it helps us to explain and understand our own life and society around us uh, not only that we also have to understand that you cannot separate literature from society so if if we need to know more about our society, we need to study our literature as well. Right. Uh, Can we go to the next slide? Yeah, definitely. Let us look at how the word literature is used here. When we talk of Gujarati literature, if I'm studying Gujarati literature, I'm studying things like poems of Javer Chand Meghani or novels of Pannalal Patel. And uh, so why is it that uh, uh, things like a Gujarati newspaper is not uh, focused on in Gujarati literature? That I think ties up with what we were discussing earlier with what is distinction between literature with the and without the definite article the. So when we are reading poems by Meghani, we are studying literature with without the use of definite article. Yeah. But the question that again would come to our mind would be when we say Gujarati literature, what, is, what does the word Gujarati mean? Do you think it has just one meaning, the word Gujarati? In fact, it has several meanings. 
it can be a language such as the gujarati language it can also indicate a region which is the region of gujarat the state of gujarat and finally it can mean a community a people such as the gujarati people so whether a gujarati person is in gujarat or in the usa you can still be gujarati right so uh, i think we can this this will lead us further to what do we understand by english when we think of english we are students of english literature what do we understand by the word english so in the same way you can see that english can mean a language such as the english language it can also indicate a region that is the region of england from where you get the word english in the first place and finally it can mean a community or a nationality such as the english of uh, for example when we use the word the english ruled over india for several years so english can have several meanings just in the same way that gujarati has several meanings right. i was also thinking sachin that we uh, we need to think about what happens when we tie the word english with the idea of literature what does it mean when we say english literature so let's look at the next slide here it can also mean many things it can mean literature in the english language just like we talk of, when we think of gujarati literature we say literature in gujarati language so similarly when we talk of english literature it implies literature in the english language so it doesn't have to be people from england who write but exactly. it can be people like rk narayan our own rk narayan who has written malgudi days guide and so many other books as well as the poems of the american poet robert frost whose poem was uh, deeply loved by nehru stopping by woods on a snowy evening so there is a sense in which everything that is written in english everything literary that is written in english is literature in the english language so you can also include uh, poets from other nationalities like from australia new zealand writers from africa writers from south africa uh, from sri lanka who write basically in english language uh, we study them when we study english literature now let's look at the other meaning of the word literature yeah it also means literature from england we tend to use the term english literature for all literature from england that is plays of shakespeare novels of thomas hardy or charles dickens uh short stories by various writers and essays by r l stevenson things that you have been reading right from school onwards right so if you uh, look at the term english literature then uh, we should keep it in mind that it means many things not just one thing so if somebody asks you the students tomorrow that what do you study when you study english literature then you should be able to reply that there are many literatures that we are actually studying and the term english literature has got many connotations and shades of meaning let's look at the next shade of meaning here it means literature of the english people L- literature of the english people also indicates literature by people of the english nationality they may come from ireland wales or scotland now this is something surprising isn't it we always think of england as or great britain as it is Uh, call today as something which is of belonging which does not have many shades or many nationalities but the truth is england contains people of several different nationalities such as irish welsh and scottish the writings of 
uh, people from these areas which carry strong traces of their own region has influenced English literature in very profound ways. In the same way we can say Gujarati literature has profoundly influenced the making of an Indian literature. So, we can, we can see how English literature contains the writings of people from different regions within England. Deepta, sometimes question comes to my mind, if uh, people from England having same nationality as England, English, then what about their languages? What about Scottish language? What about Welsh? What about Irish? These are the languages, uh, uh, probably they also have their literature. Now, can you call them English literature? What do this you is somewhat problematic. In If we consider English literature to be literature in the English language, then perhaps we cannot call it English literature. But if we consider English literature to be that literature which comes from the territory of England, then perhaps we must allow it in. But there is no final answer to this question. It is very interesting. Now, let us look at another way in which we think of English literature. And uh, the other way we can think of. Uh,